Hello, my name is David Burzens. I'm the pastor of Word of Truth Baptist Church in Prescott Valley, Arizona. I want to take a few minutes of your time today to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with you so that you could at least hear God's word and know exactly what it takes for your soul to go to heaven when you die. We're going to start off in Romans chapter 3 and verse number 23. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So we're all sinners. You know, God has made commandments that we're supposed to obey, that we're supposed to follow. You're probably familiar with some of them, like the Ten Commandments, not to kill, not to steal, not to lie. And we've all broken God's commandments at some point in our life. Now, just because everybody's a sinner and everyone has broken God's commandments, does that mean that God's just okay with that? God actually has a punishment associated with our sins, and we find that punishment in Romans chapter 6 and verse number 23. The Bible says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, that first part I want to focus on, the Bible says, the wages of sin. What a wage is is something that you earn. So when we sin, when we break God's commandments, we've earned death. And that is what we deserve. Now, when the Bible's talking about death there, obviously, we're all physically going to die one day. And I do believe that our physical death is a result of, of our sin and our sinful nature. But there's actually a place called death in the book of Revelation. In Revelation chapter 20, verse number 14, the Bible says, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. This is at the great white throne judgment of God, that some people are going to be thrown into this lake of fire, this, this fire and brimstone place that we commonly call hell. And this is the ultimate judgment or punishment for our sins. Now, many people out there will probably say, well, I'm not that bad of a person. I don't think I deserve to go to hell. But the Bible in Revelation chapter 21, just a few verses after the one we just, we just read, in Revelation 21 verse 8, the Bible gives a whole list of sins that we could commit that are worthy of hell. The Bible says, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So there's a lot of things on that list. You've probably heard murderers. You say, well, I've never killed anybody, or I'm not a sorcerer, or I'm not an idolater. But it, the Bible also says in all liars. Now, I don't know anybody who knows how to speak on this planet that hasn't told at least one lie in their life. And just as much as all it takes for you to be considered a murderer is to kill one person, you don't have to kill 10, you don't have to kill 20, you don't have to kill someone every day to be called a murderer. You kill one person, you're considered a murderer. Well, by the same token, if you just tell one lie, you're also considered a liar. You don't have to lie habitually, you don't have to lie on a daily basis to be considered a liar. Once you've broken God's law of not to bear false witness, you've become a liar. And even the sin of telling a lie, according to Scripture, is bad enough for you to deserve the punishment of hell. And the point being that we all deserve the punishment of hell. We're all in the same boat in that regard. All of us have come short. All of us have sinned. And we all need a Savior. So this is the bad news. The bad news is that we're sinners. The bad news is that we deserve a punishment from God of hell, of an eternity burning in the lake of fire. But because God loves us, which he does, he figured out a way for us to still be saved and go to heaven, even though we've already broken his law and even though we already deserve this punishment. And in Romans chapter 5 and verse number 8, the Bible says, But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So even though we're sinners, even though we don't deserve mercy from God, we don't deserve anything from God because we're lawbreakers. We've, we've broken his law. We deserve a punishment. He still loves us. And he shows us and demonstrates how much he loves us in when Jesus Christ was sent to this world to pay for the sins of the whole world. 
The Bible tells us very clearly that Jesus Christ was God in the flesh. The Bible explains how many miracles he performed, proving he was the Son of God and he was literally God in the flesh by the, the, the healing of the sick and even raising someone back to life from the dead. Jesus did many, many things. He preached many things. But ultimately, what ended up happening, even though he came unto his own, the Bible says his own received him not, he was rejected. He was arrested, they whipped him, they beat him, and they ended up nailing Jesus Christ to the cross. Now, the Bible says that even though Jesus Christ was without sin, that he never sinned one time, he allowed himself to be crucified in order to pay the debt of our sin that we owe. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter number 2, talking about Jesus Christ, I'm going to start reading in verse number 21, for even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps, who did no sin. So the Bible says very clearly, Jesus Christ was without sin. Neither was guile found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. There is a healing for our sins that's being offered through what Jesus Christ did for us. Of course, when he bare the sins of the whole world in his own body up on that cross, his body died. But three days and three nights after he died on that cross, the Bible says he rose again from the dead. He came back to life and conquered death and hell. The Bible says he has the keys to death and hell. And the Bible explains that he died for every single person in this world, for everybody. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son. That's what the Bible says. The scripture says in the most famous verse in the Bible. And he did that in order for us to be able to attain salvation. Now, how do we get saved? Jesus died for everybody, but that doesn't mean every single person is going to heaven when they die because there's one thing that we have to do. And the Bible makes this abundantly clear that there is only one thing that we need to do. In Acts chapter 16, we find a passage where there's a man who's a jailer and uh, he asks the apostle Paul and Silas, what he has to do to be saved in chapter 16, verse number 30. The Bible says, and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. So the answer is very simple. The answer is very clear. This answer lines up with every other passage in the Bible that explains how you can be saved. And that is simply to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, when the Bible says to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, it's not very complicated. But what it is saying here is that you have to not only just believe in Jesus. Like so many people today, if you ask them, do you believe in Jesus? They'll say, yeah, I believe in Jesus. But what this is referring to is what are you trusting? What are you believing on in order for your soul to go to heaven? A way that I like to explain it is like this. If you were to die today, and your soul were to be confronted with God, God were to confront you and ask you, why should I let you into heaven? Whatever your response is to that question is what you are believing on in order to be saved. It makes sense. It's what you're trusting in, what you are relying on in order to go to heaven. Well, according to scripture, what we have to rely on, what we have to believe on is the Lord Jesus Christ. The fact that Jesus Christ came to this earth, God in the flesh, lived a perfect life, died on that cross, was buried, rose again three days later, and paid the penalty in full for our sins. He substituted himself when he died up on that cross, when he took your sins in his body and paid for those sins, when he shed his blood on that cross. And all that God is requiring you to do in order to be saved and go to heaven is to believe him. Trust in that. Stop trusting in yourself. Stop trusting in your good works. Trust in what Jesus Christ already did for you. He paid the price in full. 
We just have to receive it. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You see, I could stand here confidently and tell you that I know for a fact I'm going to heaven when I die. And it's not because I think I'm some great person. It's not because I pastor a church. It's not because I read my Bible or pray or do anything like that. The reason why I know for a fact I'm going to heaven is because I know the Bible's true, and I know that Jesus Christ paid for every single one, last one of my sins. And since the Bible said it's not based on my good works, I don't have to worry about, did I do enough good works in order to make it into heaven? Or did I do too many bad works in order for God to send me to hell? I don't have to worry about any of those things. All of my sins have been washed by the blood of Jesus Christ, and I've received the free gift of salvation. I referenced Romans 6.23 earlier. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Our salvation is a free gift. It's the gift that's given to us by God, that once we receive that gift, we have eternal life, <clears throat> and we're saved forever. That's what eternal means. It means forever. I'm going to leave you with one example that's one of my personal favorite examples the Bible gives us. In John chapter 3, Jesus was talking to a man named Nicodemus, and he's preaching the gospel to him. And in John chapter 3, in verse number 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, talking to Nicodemus, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So Jesus Christ said, well, if you're going to be saved and go to heaven, you have to be born again. You may have heard that term before used, I'm a born again Christian. Hey, I'm born again. Well, what does that actually mean? Jesus explains a little bit because Nicodemus didn't un understand what he was saying. Nicodemus thought he was talking about a physical birth. But in verse number five, Jesus explains, it says, he said, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter in the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. And he clarifies it completely. So being born of water is being born of the flesh. It's when the mother's water breaks and a baby's born into this world. You're born of the flesh. That's your first birth. Everyone has one of those. The second birth, according to Scripture, according to Jesus Christ, is a spiritual birth, that you need to be born of the spirit, that your spirit needs to be born again. And once your spirit is born, that's when you become a child of God. And John chapter 1 gives us that definition. John chapter 1, verse number 12, the Bible says, But as many as received him, and in context, this is in reference to Jesus Christ, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Do you see how everything fits so perfectly? What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. I need to be born again in order to go to heaven. How do I become a child of God? How do I become born again? Believe on his name. The Bible is very consistent. Now, what I really love about the fact that Jesus Christ uses the terminology being born again is that birth is something that we understand, especially for me as a parent. I have children of my own. I know what it's like to have an unconditional love for my child. I know what it's like to look at my child and say that I'm always going to love my child no matter what. Now, I have rules for my children. I expect them to obey my rules. And if my children go and just break my rules, they don't just get away with it. Okay? There's a punishment that they're going to face. But I'll tell you one punishment that, that my children never have to worry about for me is that I'm never going to put them in my oven, turn it on broil, and lock them in there and leave them in there forever. And the beauty of this, of this analogy that Jesus Christ uses is that it, it works the same way with God. When you're born into God's family, you have one birthday. Your spirit's born one time. You don't have to get born again and again and again. You get born again one time. You're born into his family. You become a child of God. As a child, God has rules for you to follow. He expects you to follow those rules. And guess what? When you break God's commandments, when you disobey God, he will punish you. The Bible is very clear that God says that he, he scourges every son whom he receiveth. Every child that becomes born again, that is part of God's family, will be disciplined. They will be punished. But it's because God loves you. But one punishment that we never have to worry about facing as a member of God's family is being cast into hell. 
because that is something that Jesus Christ has already paid for. So the good news is that once you're saved, you are always saved. You are saved eternally. We can trust the promise that God has made unto us that he's given us the gift of eternal life. My favorite verse in the entire Bible, John chapter 5, verse 24, Jesus Christ said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. In that verse, you have three verb tenses. You have the present tense where the Bible says that if you believe, you have everlasting life. That's what hath means. You have it right now. And then he says, you shall not come into condemnation. That's future tense. So you will not be going to hell at all. You won't be condemned. Why? Because you've already passed from death unto life. And there's your past tense. Past, present, future. Your sins are paid for in full because of what Jesus did for you. That's some good news. That's some reason to celebrate. That's being able to trust that God has given us eternal life. It's not based on my works reason to rejoice. Hey, it's a reason to, to tell other people about what Jesus did for them. Thanks for listening. God bless. Thank you for watching that gospel presentation. Now, if you believe the things that was presented in that video, if you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose again from the dead to pay for your sins, you ought to tell God that you believe those things. Just call in the name of the Lord right now and get your salvation secure with him. It's very easy to do. All you have to do is a word of prayer or something like this. Just say, dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I deserve to go to hell, but I believe that Jesus Christ paid for my sins when he died on the cross and rose again from the dead. Please save me right now and give me your free gift of eternal life. I'm only trusting in you to get to heaven. Now, if you prayed a prayer or something similar to that, and you, and you honestly believe with all of your heart that Jesus Christ paid for your sins, congratulations, you have eternal life. God bless.